Let's go to crystallization, the first of two parts. So what is crystallization? If you can focus your eyes here, it involves a formation of solid particles within a homogeneous phase, basically liquid solutions, by either cooling or removing some of the solvent. It consists of a two-phase mixture consisting of the mother liquor, ML, and the crystals being formed. This mixture is separated by either centrifugation, filtration, or settling, and the wet crystal is washed with a fresh solvent. The adhering solution has the same composition as the mother liquor, and therefore may be assumed as a saturated solution. Because you know that the adhering solution, the one that adheres to the crystals when they are formed, would be the same concentration, would be the mother liquor, right? It would be the wet solution that is being attached to the crystals. So the adhering mother liquor, ML prime, in the wet crop or wet crystal is typically in the range of only 2 to 10% of the wet crystal weight. So not so much. So you can see in here some actual crystallization process plants. Since the final mother liquor is in contact with a sufficiently large crystal surface, the concentration of the mother liquor is that of the saturated solution in the final temperature of the process. And then also important to take note is that in evaporative crystallization, the solvent must be taken into account. If hydrated crystals are obtained from the solution, water of crystallization must be taken into account since this water is not available for retaining the solute in the solution. So again, what is the purpose of crystallization? It's basically one of the few separation methods that can give us high purity products. So in this case, it is the crystal or the crystals that are formed that are being desired. So let's look into the overall material balances on over the crystallizers. So of course, the overall material balance, as you can see, if you look at this uh, figure, you can see that the feed plus feed is equal to the solvent plus the mother liquor plus the crystal because the mother liquor and the crystal will be the one that flows out. Or sometimes if you would focus your eyes here and then form imaginary boundary here, feed is equal to solvent plus the crystal or in wet crop and then the mother liquor. So when the two-phase mixture is separated, WC is equal to, of course, crystal plus the adhering solution. Also, the ML prime, the final mother liquor, is basically the mother liquor minus the adhering solution. And then when you add these two, WC plus ML is equal to C plus ML, you'll notice that some terms will cancel, leaving you with feed is equal to solvent plus the crystal plus the mother liquor. If, for example, you want to check the balances, the component balances, the X of the feed times the feed is equal to the fraction of the mother liquor times the mother liquor plus the fraction of the crystal times the crystal. The mass fraction here, for example, of magnesium sulfate in the feed solution, magnesium sulfate in the mother liquor, and then in this case, magnesium sulfate in the crystal. However, you'll notice that the magnesium sulfate in the crystal here is basically an anhydrous crystal, so meaning there's no water of crystallization. Because in order to solve for Xc, that molar mass of the anhydrous over molar mass of the hydrated times the number of moles of the anhydrous over the number of moles of hydrated. So that's the molar ratio. But if it's anhydrous, it's basically just equal to 1. Also important to take note of are, number 1, the mass fraction of the mother liquor is the solubility of the solute at the operating temperature. Whereas the Xc or the mass fraction of the crystal is the gravimetric factor converting the mass of the hydrate crystal equivalent to the mass of the anhydrous crystal. So again, 
SF, typically, this is either given to you or this is potentially what would be required. ML, this is basically based from the solubilities. XC, it's depending if it's hydrous or anhydrous. If it's anhydrous, it's purely equal to 1. Whereas if it's hydrous or hydrated crystals, you have to check for the molar ratios. So going back to the material balances. So if we are to complete the material balances, you can see here that the feed, the X of the feed, goes to the crystallizer. What comes out of the crystallizer are vapor, if there is vapor, and then the magma. The magma consists of the mother liquor. So let's just call it L or ML. And then the crystal. The magma is a two-phase mixture of mother liquor and crystals of different sizes outgoing the crystallizer. The mother liquor L is a saturated solution at the cooling temperature. That's why I said um, it's important to know the, the compositions at these temperatures. So let's try to evaluate the XL, the mother liquor. If you want to write this as XML, it's okay. It's just basically the same as XL. So use the solubility data in the CHA handbook, table 220 of the CHA handbook, solubilities of inorganic compounds in water at various temperatures. So do take note that solubility data are given in terms of parts of anhydrous solute per 100 parts of water. So, for example, the solubility of whatever you are getting is 22 grams of solute particles all over 100 grams of water. So that means the solubility is 22 grams per 100. In order to solve for the fraction, it should be 22 all over the sum. So it's just 0 0.18. Or sometimes you might encounter what you call the solubility diagrams. For example, you have the solubility diagram of magnesium sulfate water system, the sodium chloride and potassium chloride system, potassium nitrate, sodium chloride, manganese sulfate, and water system. So they are expressed here and they're shown in figures 1852 of the handbook or 27.3 from McCabe, and so on. And then do take note of the way they are being expressed because sometimes different books express them differently. So this is an example of the phase diagram. So for example, this one, this is the y-axis is in terms of degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the x-axis is in terms of concentration mass fraction of magnesium sulfate. So for example, I have here, say, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the concentration would be roughly 0.35 grams, or is this grams? Yeah, of magnesium sulfate per magnesium sulfate thick hydrate because 140 is attached to this line. But of course, for example, if it's at 40, it would be the seven hydrate. If it's at, let's just say 30 degrees, it would be this line. So you have to be careful at where you are being attached. So in order to solve for the recovery and yield, because this is what you want to solve for, like how much product are we getting from each? This one, percentage recovery is C times X of C, the crystal, all over feed times XF times 100%. And then the yield basically is simply C over F times 100. So when you look at this again, the overall material balance, you already know this. F is equal to V plus M or F is equal to V plus L plus C because M is simply L plus C. 